Here we have a triangle boiler with a yellow burner. I'm gonna do service work on it. And some guys remarked that I should throw my adjustables away and buy real wrenches. And they're probably right. <laughs> but I just can't get myself to do that. I just love my adjustable. One size fits all, you know. Oops. Nope, I was right the first time. Here we go up here. I don't work on Riellos a lot. I don't have too many customers that have them. They're a good burner, but they have to be set up just right. Like any burner, I guess. That little twist when it comes out. There we go. There's a business end. Some carbon build up there, a retention head. It's been over a year since this was serviced. look good another nozzle let's see if you can probably can't see that but it is a 0.65 is firing rate and it's a 60 angle is 60 and it's a B so it's a 6560B Not bad. Inside that fuel pump right here, there's a strainer and that needs to be 
replaced or cleaned or checked at least. And that is an, this one is an Allen screw. Allen. Good old Allen. Try to keep you in frame here. So in here you have an O-ring and a strainer, and that strainer looks pretty good. I don't see anything on it at all. Oil's nice and clean, but I'm going to try to get it out. Sometimes they don't want to come out. There we go. Yeah, it's in pretty good shape. You can see through it pretty well. Nice. Filters have been doing their job. You know, residue. There's really nothing there at all. So we'll put it back together. Now the trick is to these O-rings. They, there are gaskets available. Most of the time it's O-rings. If the O-ring's in good shape, I don't usually replace it because it is an O-ring. Lasts many, many years. But if you take it out, the oil tends to swell them, and it's almost impossible to get them back. But it looks good. So we're going to put it back. Very carefully, not to disturb that old ring. I don't know if they still do it, but they used to have this filter here. It's a small little filter. Um, this one I know there's no filter in there, so I'm not going to take it apart. It was removed years ago because it's it's hard to get those for some reason. And the filter at the tank does a great job. So I took it out years ago, so I know there's nothing in it. And we're back. All right. 
if you over tighten the nozzles you'll stretch because the, the threads in the nozzle is uh, stainless steel or steel and the this is brass if you over tighten it you'll stretch the threads on the brass the nozzle adapter and it's a bear to get them out you got to use every turn as a wrench and it's it's terrible so you want it good and snug but not crazy there's a little hole here the screw goes so you know you got it in far enough and as far as electrodes go here their yellow is very forgiving with electrodes. It's a one-piece electro assembly, unlike the back end of the car line where there's two electrodes. So to adjust it, you loosen this up and just slide it forward. You can see you have very little adjustment room, and they're very forgiving. So everyone I see is always in the middle. I've never adjusted them. They've always been in the middle. I've never had issues. And in 38 years of doing this, I've never replaced electrodes. So I tighten this down a little bit. Just to make sure I'm in that hole. See, I wasn't in the hole. Hmm. This one's being stubborn. There we go. You can see I'm in the hole. And I move it back and forth just a little bit. This is just my technique. And I know I kind of get it in the center of that hole where it belongs. There we go right there and then just snug it don't get crazy with this guys it's not going to go anywhere it's not a car just snug it i've seen them people put them in so tight it's crazy and there's electrodes look great everything looks good and so we put it back in finicky got to get it just right there we go and then there's a little hole here and a little tab little tab here that sticks out and it goes into a hole up here that's how you know you get the end this end in properly watch this nozzle line it will always get in the way Wiggle it a little bit, and there we go. If you can feel it, this block fits right, it's solid, right up against the housing, and it's right there. It's nice and solid. Realos changed their screws over the years. Some always grab the wrong one, it seems like. And again, just snug it. The electrodes, are, uh, these bus bars are spring-loaded, which is nice. Make sure they're clean. Put the nozzle line back on. Be careful. Don't strip it. If you can't get it on good, at least five or six turns with your fingers, it's not on right. And again, don't over tighten it. Just snug it good with a wrench. And yes, I'll say don't do what I do and use an adjustable, but us old timers, you know, we got bad habits. But we try to teach not to. <laughs> there. Nice. Okay. There. All right, now I'm not gonna put this cover on just yet. And the reason why I'm not is because there's a little trick I'll show you that if Riello has such a short time for timing out that when I go to purge it and bleed the air out, then what happens is um, it'll lock out before I get the air and I'll have to press it so many times that it's crazy but if you leave that cover off and you start it up and you shine a flashlight in there you fool the control thinking that there's flame and it'll continue to run for you 
a little service trick. All right, so we're not going to do that. Now we're going to go change the filter. This is the glamorous part. Well, it's all pretty glamorous. Back, back to my adjustable again. That's why I use an adjustable. See, it's like a multi-tool. Well, that one's not tight. thing about these boilers they're built very very well I don't, they don't make them anymore they're a steel dry base boiler but I tell you they were built to last cover must weigh 20 pounds all right so I can see it's a little sooty in there so let's do something about that. Fantastic cover.
beautiful. All right, put the top back on it. We're going to put the control back in. Oof, a lot of dust. A lot of dust. That's why it was sooty. So in reality, this is the ignition transformer, the primary control, and the CATS LI. All in one control. If you've never worked on one, it's... They're totally different um, than our standard burners made in the United States. They're Canadian built. Um, I think some came from Italy too. I don't know if they still do that. Like they said, I don't really get involved with them too much. But I've worked on many of them throughout the years. So you've got contacts right here. A little schematic of what's what. It's good and it's bad because sometimes some of the nice, easy things to test it with the Beckett and Carlin's you can't do with this because all the contacts are underneath the control. But you put it, put it down here. And make sure that their bus bars are in with a transformer and push it forward, lock it in. And then there's a screw here on the side. You tighten up to lock it in. Okay. All right. So now what we're gonna do? I'm gonna leave the cover off, like I told you. Get the bucket. Just a case for drips. Get my big bucket over here. Now I do have a wrench for this. up just a little bit get my bleeder hose pop it on there and open it up okay and now I'm gonna turn it on And we're going to take a shiner flashlight battery down in there. And hopefully that will fool the... ...control. And you can watch this oil. I don't know if you can see it. There's the air. The burner should not lock out because I'm shining light into it. It thinks there's a fire. When I get the air out, so now I'm flushing the oil line and purging it, getting the air out. And I'm also checking to see if it's plugged up because it'll cavitate. There, all the oil's nice stream. Now I'll shut off and move my light. And it should shut down in safety. Let's start it up. Check the cycles a few times. Make sure it fires right up. 